Hi everyone, it's JJ here and welcome to Be Colorful. In the last craft haul video, if you would like to take a peek, I will leave the link here in the description box. In addition to showing you and testing the Nuvo ink pad, I showed and described a die from the Tonic Studio Shaker Creator series. They are dies that make easiest the creation of shaker cards. In fact, we got two dies, one that cut out the full shape, in this case uh, is a glass of beer, and the other one that cut out uh, the internal spaces, allowing us to create uh, what will be the window of uh, our shaker card. But the best way to explain an operation is to put it into practice. Let's make our premise first. I will use the blisters included in the die set, but obviously you can use a normal acetate sheet, perhaps recycled from the packaging. In short, you can make a normal shaker card. Also, if you don't have this die, you can use whatever you have and follow the general style. I invite you to be free to use all your creativity because it doesn't have to be stopped if we don't have a die and I'll show you that in this video. So, let's get started! For the first card, I'm going to make a fresh and simple style. First, I'm going to create the card base on white cardstock. That will be a 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half standard size. After that, I'm going to cut out a panel slightly smaller than the standard card on white cardstock. Now I can create the background using a Distress Oxide ink. It will be a very simple background. I chose a light blue ink because I will make a beer with a mustard yellow paper. As you can see from the images, they are two colors that match perfectly together. To spread it, I'm using a blending sponge. I take the color with the sponge and I dab the excess ink off on my work surface first, so I don't add unpleasant blobs of ink to my panel. I proceed in circular motions, starting from the middle of the panel, which will be darker, fading as I move toward the edges. Distress oxide reacts with water, therefore a technique that I love to use is the splashing. I simply spray a few drops of water on the surface, I let it react for a few seconds and I dry it with a sheet of kitchen paper. Look at that, they are a kind of ghost drops. It is a very easy technique, but really pretty. We can leave this cool background as it is, or add some interest, which I will do by making a series of random stamps of the word cheers. You can use any stamp, uh, like figures or other words, such as greetings. I'm gonna use uh, the same color as uh, the background, so as uh, to keep a subtle background. Indeed, as you can see, I'm using the second or the third generation stamp. Now let's move on to the focal point, which is the beer. I'm going to die cut the full shape on white cardstock. Then on some yellow cardstock, I'm using mustard yellow, I will die cut one more shape. I'm going to chop off the handle from the mustard glass and I will die cut a third figure 
on a white paper or a close shade of white. For example, I will use an ivory color. In this case, I will die cut just the top since it will be the foam of my beer and it will only be on the top unless someone spilled the beer badly, so too much foam came out. I'm going to chop off the handle and also the parts that are not needed, both from the mustard paper and from the ivory paper. I'm using the die to mark with a pencil the point where I will cut. I'm going to cut out the excess piece from the foam using the top just cut from the master figure as a reference. Now I have to create the windows of the shaker card using the appropriate die. This cut must be done in both the colored and the white shapes and the openings must match perfectly. So first of all, with some uh, low stick tape, I'm going to temporarily fix the foam and the beer together. With the same tape adhesive, I also keep uh, the white and the colored shapes together. I carefully position the die on top of the beer and I'm going to pass it through my die cutting machine. I gently remove the tape adhesive and here my shaker beer begins to take shape and color. I'm gonna glue the two parts together. This operation could have been done before but I was afraid that the overlap of the paper might uh, be too thick for the big shot, so I didn't uh, glue them uh, right away in order to be able to die cut them separately. Now, with the same die, I will create the window also in the background panel. To position it straight, I'm using my new T ruler a tool that uh, works like uh, the double set squares mainly used uh, in the technical drawings to draw straight lines. Now I'm going to add some shades to my beer. It is very optional but I think uh, that adding shadows makes uh, the element more detailed and refined, giving uh, them some depth. To create the shade I'm using Distress Inks, in particular an orange for the mustard paper and Antique Linen, which is a very light brown, for the foam. To apply the color I'm using a finger dabber, which uh, allowed me uh, a more accurate application. I concentrate more ink on the bottom of the shapes and then gradually attenuate it as I go up to the top. Then I'm gonna create the background that can be seen through the acetate. So I have cut out two pieces of paper, one mustard for the beer and one ivory for the foam. Also here I'm going to make some shading to give a nice depth. As before, the bottom will be slightly darker to gradually fade going up toward the top. Now that I have all the components ready, I can assemble my shaker card. I'm going to use one of these blisters, which of course can be replaced by a normal acetate sheet. I'm going to apply liquid glue, you can use double-sided tape if you prefer, on the front of the blister, just in the edges. Then I'm gonna stick it on the back of my background panel. I also glue the outline of the beer on the front of the panel, taking care to match the edges. 
Now it's time to add the shaker element. You can fill uh, it uh, with glitters, confetti, sequins, using any colors that you like. I opt for these circles, uh, similar to small semi-transparent mirrors, which remind me small bubbles. Perfect uh, to create a kind of uh, sparkling effect. I gently remove the protective film that cover the adhesive of the blister and I'm gonna glue the background paper over it. Uh, bellissimo. As a sentiment, I'm going to stamp on a strip of white cardstock the sentence It's time to celebrate. I'm gonna use the clear Versa Mark ink because I plan to use the heat embossing with a black embossing powder. If you don't have a black embossing powder, you can get the same result by stamping your sentiment with a slow drying black ink, like the Versafine Onyx Black, and using a clear embossing powder. I sprinkle the powder on the sentiment and I'm going to melt it with my heat gun. Ok, I never used a black powder before and honestly I don't like the result at all. It only black colored the letters and I don't feel the embossed to the touch and I don't see the glossy finish. Only on the word time. It failed. After creating a fish tail on one side of the paper strip, I'm gonna glue it below the beer glass with some foam pad. To pop out the colors more, I'm going to cut out a black panel slightly larger than the background panel. In the image, you can see the exact measurement. In this way, I will create a very thin border all around my background panel. Now I'm ready to stick everything down, but I'm going to stick some leftovers paper, since uh, I have uh, layered uh, different paper thickness. In this way I get uh, a nice and even levels. Then I can stick the panel on my card base. As a finishing touches, I will create a glass effect on the handle of the beer using a glossy accent. And since I have it at hand, I'm going to add a few drops here and there. And the first beer is waited on. For the second card, I will opt for a vintage look. First, I'm gonna create my card base using a 300 GSM ivory cardstock. I think bright white is not suitable for vintage. After that, I will create a craft paper panel, uh, slightly smaller than the card base. I'm going to use a stitcher rectangle die, but obviously you can cut out a rectangle with your paper trimmer. Now I will create another panel using this navy blue paper, which will be my background panel. This dark blue match very well with craft paper. This combo is used for wedding invitations, creating a rustic effect contrasted by the elegance and depth of this blue. I make my panel using a rectangle die of the Tony Craft Kit number 15. Again, I repeat, you can cut your panel with your paper trimmer or use the dies that you have. This blue panel will become the wall of my old pub. So I'm going to stamp a series of bricks using a stamp from the Tony Craft Kit number 14. If you have a stencil, you can use that 
or a wall uh, pattern paper. I only had uh, these uh, stamps to create a wall uh, effect. For stamping I'm using my stamping platform because uh, I don't get a clear stamp uh, with this white ink so I need to stamp several times in the same place to get a nice impression. While I created the background I'd like uh, to remind you that as always you can find the list of all the supplies I'm using in this video in the description box below and uh, on my blog for which you will always find the link in the description box. Now let's move on to create the beer. I'm uh, going to die cut the main shape on the ivory cardstock. Once uh, this is done, following the same steps seen uh, for the first card, I will create the windows of the shaker card, both on the outline of the beer and uh, on the background panel. For the beer background, this time I'll use a golden satin paper. While for the foam I will do a very fun technique. First of all I'm going to die cut the shape of the foam on a piece of white cardstock. Then I chop off the excess following the marks left by the die. And now I will create a fantastic uh, foam effect with a white pearlescent expanding mousse by Nuvo. The main characteristic of this uh, type of mousse is that if you put the heat with an embossing tool, it will expand, creating a spongy effect perfect for a beer foam. So, as you can see, I spread the mousse on the cardstock quite generously. I'm also dabbing the spatula to get uh, a nice texture. I make sure that my heat gun is uh, quite hot, then I'm going to make the magic. Look at that, it's so beautiful! Of course, I don't need the top of the blister anymore, so I will cut it out. No, please don't! I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Judge, be serious and go back to the card. With some liquid glue, I'm gonna stick the part of the blister that has been saved on the back of the blue background panel. Before gluing the rest I will make some shading. The ink pads that I will use are always the Distress ink and are the colors that I love to use when I want to create a vintage look. So I'm going to wage the shape of the glass with the antique linen. And with the vintage photo I also give a vintage look to the blue panel. I'm going to age the foam a little. And uh, always uh, with the vintage photo, I slightly mark the edges of the glass. Of course, I define the edges of the craft paper panel. Every respectable old pub has a wooden counter. I will use one of these uh, paper from this pad that uh, I have four edges uh, and uh, that I don't even like, but sometimes uh, they are useful, uh, as uh, in this case. I chose that very randomly, so this uh, light hood uh, will uh, disappear anyway. 
I'm going to create a bunch of uh, strips that will become uh, the plank of my rustic counter. With uh, some vintage photo, I will make them a little bit darker. I also use the walnut stain to darken them even more. With a thin tip black pen, I'm going to define the wood grain that the color has partially covered. So, as you can see, to make this wooden plank, you can color a white cardstock or use brown paper to then create the grain, drawing them by yourself or using stamps or stencils, if you have them. Or again, you can print an image from the internet. To define the edges even more, I apply black ink along the edges of the paper strips. Now I'm ready to assemble my pub counter. Then I cut out the axes. I'm adding some shadows uh, under the glass to bring everything together. It's time to fill the shaker card. This time I will use a mix of confetti and sequins, uh, the same circles uh, that I used uh, for the first card, and uh, some gold confetti and sequins. I'm going to remove the protective film and close the blister with the piece of gold satin paper I have made before. I'm going to stick the glass on the front of my panel. As well as the main panel on the craft paper one. And I'm also gluing the beautiful foam on the top of the beer. For the sentiment, I'm going to die cut the word beer day instead of birthday using this alphabet set by C6. The full sentence will be happy beer day. I die cut the letters both on black cardstock and on the same gold paper that I used for the beer background. Once ready, I'm going to glue the gold letters over the black letters, just slightly offset to create a shadow effect. Then I'm going to play a little bit with the letters to decide where they are going to go. After my quick decision, I can glue them to the panel. I'm going to stamp the word happy on a strip of black paper using a clear ink because I will emboss the word with a white embossing powder.
as uh, I have already said, I believe that uh, a bright white is not suitable for a vintage look. Therefore, I'm going to stain the world uh, happy with uh, my coffee archival link. Before gluing the strip, I'm going to create uh, fish tails on both uh, ends. Then I'm going to stick it down with some foam pad. I'm going to stick the shaker panel on my card base and finally I'm going to add some finishing touches. I'm just creating uh, nails on the plank uh, using a black crystal drop by Nuvo and a very thin dotter. For completeness I'm going to age the card base with uh, the vintage photo. And the second beer is spilled too. The third beer is for a little more particular taste. In fact, this card will be Guinness inspired, the dark Irish beer that I really like, probably for its coffee aftertaste. I will use the color palette that the producers of the drink use, that is black, gold and brown. First of all, I'm going to cut out uh, my main panel. I'm using this beautiful black satin paper. I have already prepared my card base in a horizontal landscape, as you can see from the picture on uh, white cardstock. As you can see, I have cut out uh, my panel, leaving uh, two white uh, border on the top and on the bottom of my card base. I'm going to cover up uh, this white border with uh, two strips of uh, gold satin paper. Let's make my beer using this uh, brown pearlescent paper. I'm going to chop off the handle of the glass because uh, the Guinness is uh, usually served in an inverted bell glass. I'm also going to create the windows of the shake card with the appropriate die. For the form, this time I will use uh, this uh, ivory pearlescent paper. Of course, I'm going to cut out just the top of the glass. I'm going to cut out the little bit excess handle and I shorten the shape following the marks left by the die. I glue the foam on the top of the beer and I'm going to die cut again to get the window back. Now I'm also going to cut out the beer background from the same brown pearlescent paper. After that, I will create shadows, this time using a black ink, in order to darken the beer as it actually is in reality. I do the same for the foam background, using a piece of uh, ivory pearlescent paper and creating the shade with a not too dark uh, brown ink. Then I'm gonna cut out the windows of the shaker card on the black background panel. I'm going to glue the outlines of the glass on the front of the black panel and the blister on the back. I'm ready to fill the shaker card. This time I'm using a mix of copper and gold sequins and confetti. I'm gonna use the gold one to fill the top of the blister and I also put some of them on the bottom. I can remove the film from the blister and close it with the background I have created. I'm gonna cut out any excess and I can glue everything down. I did stick uh, some leftovers paper 
to get uh, nice and even layers. For a long time, I have looked in my stage for a stamp or a die sentiment that uh, could match with uh, this card, but I didn't find anything I liked. Giving up? Absolutely no. So with a graphic software, I have uh, digitally modified a Guinness logo. Instead of the word uh, Guinness, I put uh, happy birthday. You can download this uh, image from my blog, link down below. After cutting out the logo, I'm going to cover it up with some uh, clear self-adhesive uh, film, the one used uh, to cover the books. This step, uh, of course, is totally optional. I just uh, like the idea of uh, having uh, a glossy surface for this logo. To finish the element, I'm gonna create a very thin uh, frame all around the logo using uh, the gold satin paper. And uh, I'm going to stick uh, the logo on the gold paper. Since my cutting skill is quite terrible, to give the impression of having done a proper job, I use my Nouveau Gold alcohol marker at the very edges of the gold frame. Now I'm going to stick the sentiment on the card. Do you like my Batman plaster? So to glue it, I will use foam tape to give a nice dimension. I take this opportunity to try my new roll by Artisa. I have paid it less than £15. I think it's a good value for money. At the first impression the sponge looks great and is a roll almost 33 meters long, so I will be fine for a long time. In addition, the package claims that it is a strong adhesive and that its holding capacity is up to 1 kg. I really think it will keep the paper sticked properly, which I assure you is not obvious. I found things detached from the card and it's not good. So I'm going to stick it on the top of my card. We have come to the final details, where I'm going to glue some sequins here and there, using the same ones that I used to fill the beer. After deciding more or less their position, I glue them with a dot of liquid glue. After sticking all the sequins, I can say that the third beer is also served. The video ends here. I had a lot of fun creating this shaker card and I hope you get to enjoy it too and that it gives you some ideas to create your shaker beers. Thanks for watching the video, leave me a comment to let me know which beer is your favorite. Also leave me a nice and fresh like if you like the video. I greet you, see you next time and be sparkling!